What's up, Internet? We are here today with some rather sad news. A few days ago, I had received an email saying that Xbox was shuttering its Xbox 360 marketplace. And while Microsoft has done a fair bit of backwards compatibility on the Xbox One and presumably Xbox Series whatever, I don't know, I don't own one, there are still a fair few things on the Xbox 360 marketplace that will just be gone forever. And as an archivist, that pains me greatly. I mean, I'm, I'm reminded quite a lot about the Xbox Indie channel, which had so many really cool things, albeit you usually had to dig for them, that you just can't play anywhere else anymore. Seriously, how am I going to get to play Bonded Realities now? I have the demo on my Xbox, I'd like to play the full version, put it on Steam please. But my point is that there are a lot of games out there that just aren't available anywhere else on the Xbox ecosystem and they're just going to disappear into the void forever in about 11 months as of the time of this recording. And I thought it was important that I do my best to cover what I think the 10 best games you need before the Xbox 360 marketplace gets nuked forever and they're just gone. Because these games are things that you can't experience anywhere else on the Xbox ecosystem. Now, to clarify, I'm specifically talking about games on the Xbox ecosystem, so the games we're going to be covering here are going to be not backwards compatible on later consoles, not available through retail because, I mean, those discs will probably always exist, at least until Disc Rot finally gets them all, and have not been remade for Xbox. They might be on Steam, they might be on PlayStation, something, but if Xbox is really your console of choice and you've got nothing else, you need to get these now. Am I clear? Okay? Okay. And of course, I'm not going to be talking about things that are already delisted. This actually makes things a little bit tricky. Two of the three games I wanted to talk about for this list actually already are. So unfortunately, no exotic, no Bangayo, no Outrun Arcade. I've got the demo to that and I still want to play it, but the freaking Microsoft systems will not let me buy it. No Marvel Blast Ultra, no really cool Doritos dinosaur game I've always wanted to play but haven't had the chance because it was shuttered before I had the chance to play it. And of course, I'm just gonna say it, no Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I know, it hurts. This is why digital preservation is important, people. Anyway, we're gonna start off with one honorable mention because it doesn't quite fit the mold of the other games and it's a little bit different, so it's kinda got a big asterisk next to that and that is Mushihime-sama Futari. This is one of my favorite shmups of all time, but it's not actually on the Xbox 360 digital marketplace. You might be asking, Fury, why are you putting this here if it's not actually here? And here's the weird thing. It's a physical Japanese import that is one of the few region-free Xbox 360 games, but the DLC to this game that, like, doubles the game's size and content, that is on the North American Xbox 360 marketplace for some bizarre reason. They misspelled the ever-living crap out of its name, but it's there. You can buy it. They won't sell you the game for some reason, but they're more than happy to sell you the expansion to it that requires the game. It's confusing and I have no idea why, but I'm glad it's at least available. And if you want to get this game, I suggest you do, because this basically creates the most definitive way of playing this game. And to reiterate, this is one of the best bullet hell shmups I've ever played. And to skip out on what is effectively the definitive experience, I would feel bad if I didn't bring that up. Anyway, let's move on to the list proper with number 10. Under Defeat HD. Now, strictly speaking, this is not a digital exclusive game, but if you want a physical copy, you'll be importing it, and depending on which region you import it from, that can get really unbelievably expensive. And like most every Xbox 360 game that wasn't released by Cave, it's not region free. So you'll have to go and get a whole extra Xbox 360 with the required region just to play it. And it's probably gonna be one of those older Xbox 360s that have like those wildly bespoke power cords, which, seriously, why are there like eight different specific power cords for the older versions of the Xbox 360? Who thought of that and can we get them fired? And of course, those cables, for whatever reason, cost three times that of the Xbox itself. <sighs> And yes, I am just bitter. I have two Xbox 360s without the power cables that might have awesome downloadable titles I can't access. On the other hand, however, you could just get the digital download in the North American marketplace, 
be a lot cheaper, heck of a lot less of a hassle, and then you don't have to try and search for weird power cables. Everyone wins! And by that I mean you! But Under Defeat HD is a very cool little shmup. It is historically important as being one of those revived from the dead zombie Dreamcast games that somehow ended up on the Xbox 360 and PS3. It is a combination of vertical scrolling shmup and omnidirectional shmup, where you can rotate your ship to aim it in different directions. It's a very, very interesting system, and I can't say I've played too many games that are quite like Under Defeat HD. And just in general, it's a very interesting shmup for the system. That said, if you do have a PlayStation, you could just get a PS3 version. They're region free. Awesome soundtrack, amazing shmup. You really ought to play under defeat HD and not by like six Xboxes hoping one has a functioning power cable. Don't be like me. Number nine, Death Spank, dispenser of justice and hero to the downtrodden. This is an amazing little trilogy of hacky slashy Diablo-esque adventure games. And with writers from Monkey Island responsible for the goofiness of this game, Seriously, this game wears its inspiration on its sleeve, and it's just likable. The third game, however, is a little bit weird. First of all, it doesn't contain the Death Spank name in its title, it lacks the Avatar Award features the previous two games had, and weirdly enough, unlike the other two, it is delisted. And weirdly enough, only the second game in the series is backwards compatible, for whatever reason but they are a series of incredibly humorous hack-and-slash adventures with tremendous acting and really a solid gameplay loop. You get loot all over the place in this game. It changes the weapons you hold in your character's hands. Your armor will change as you go through the game. Your weapons are awesome. Your character is hilarious and ridiculously well acted. I recognize that voice actor from Zoids. And Cyber Six, um, Michael Dobson, I believe. Very, very good voice actor. Does a great job in this game. But Death Spank as a series is just amazing, and I'm honestly shocked it's kind of not around anymore. They only got three games out of it. But I feel like we could see like an entire massive franchise of Death Spank games just because of how well written they were and how fun they were. Even just playing a little bit of the first game here, I was all over this game and I can't wait to buy them all again on Steam because seriously, these games are an absolute blast. And if you love a goofy, fun time or you want some solid loot in a dungeon crawly hacky slashy experience, I struggle to think of anything quite as unique and interesting as Death Spank. Number 8, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike Online Edition. Let me make something perfectly clear about myself. I have muscle control problems with my hands. Fighting games don't work all that well for me, and I tend to dislike them because of that, because I genuinely just cannot play the same game as any opponent. And yet, I love this game. Street Fighter Third Strike is an absolutely gorgeous fighting game. It is one of the most underappreciated Street Fighters, at least as far as Capcom's concerned. Seriously, other than the EX series, I don't see them remaking any Street Fighter less than Street Fighter 3. But it's a fast-paced, beautiful fighting game with some really genuinely cool characters. You can play as freaking Troa Barton in this game for some reason. And of course, he's my guy, because when he can play as a Gundam pilot, why would you not play as a Gundam pilot? That's just a straight-up downgrade. The environments are absolutely luscious, and I just love how fast and fluid this game is. I'm bad at fighting games, but if I can sit here and say I genuinely enjoyed it, even if I couldn't do most or even any of the special attacks because my hands are what they are, that says something to the quality of your fighting game. And Street Fighter Third Strike is just amazing. I have so many fond memories of just playing this on Xbox 360, and genuinely, even though I was just playing the computer opponent, it was one of the most fun fighting games I've ever played, easily. And of course, I spent countless hours just rocking out to the hip-hop theme song in the menus. Seriously, the music in this game slaps. The only thing about this game I think is bad is the final boss can heal himself, and when you're already struggling with the very basic controls, that's a tall order to deal with. But that said, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition is genuinely a must-have for the Xbox 360. It is probably my favorite Street Fighter experience I've ever had. And I mean, Capcom's more than happy to shovel out Street Fighter 2 every year, but like, why haven't we gotten another re-release of Street Fighter 3? It genuinely seems underserved, and I can't imagine why. This game is awesome. Number seven on our list will be quite familiar to anyone who's actually watched my intro video, because I just used my review of this game, where I talked a lot about my own personal history. This is Xenoclash Ultimate Edition. This game is here entirely for nostalgic reasons. You have to understand that the Xbox 360 was a time where 
every single game out there got a demo. So you didn't have to just buy a game based on screenshots or whatever few videos you could see because YouTube 1.0 was really the only thing around at that point and yeah. Being able to play a demo of anything was a big deal. Also, can we go back to that? Seriously, that is so unbelievably pro-consumer and I hate the regression we've had. Either way, Xenoclash was the very first demo I ever downloaded on my Xbox 360, and I honestly forgot what it was called until Sly sent me a copy on Steam and I finally got to properly experience it. This is an absolutely bizarre, bonkers game. It is a first-person beat-em-up, not unlike Breakdown on the original Xbox, mixed with a little bit of gunplay and first-person shooting, although the gunplay is fairly clumsy. It takes place on an absolutely bizarre, surreal alien world known as Xenozoic that genuinely reminds me a lot of of the odd world games, albeit grittier and slightly less goofy. And this game did well enough to not only get a sequel, but we just got a third one a couple months ago. Yeah, they dropped Zeno from the title and just called it Clash, but that is a third Zeno Clash game. Now is the time to go back and play the earlier ones. They're a little bit clumsy, but it's a bizarre world you have to experience yourself, just because of how strange and surreal and interesting it is. There genuinely isn't anything else out there like Zeno Clash, not really, and I think that everyone really ought to explore this game and see it to its end. Sure, it's not the best playing game ever, it's very awkward and janky at times, but it's so special and interesting and weird. And shoutouts to my boy Oxameter, who walks in a straight line, because that's what Oxameter does. But Xeno Clash is such a bizarre, strange, interesting game that it would be a shame for this to disappear into the ether forever. Number six, Darkstalkers Resurrection. This was a very special game. This was Darkstalkers very last game, and it's last shot to actually build up some hype to actually get Capcom to make another one. And it kind of fell flat on its face, and that's really bloody sad because Darkstalkers is bloody brilliant. Granted, this is not the best compilation of Darkstalkers, that would be the PS2 version that has all five games in it, but this is two separate Darkstalkers games combined with achievements and some other stuff. It's a fighting game that features some of the most absolutely awesome characters ever. Think goofy 90s comic book inspirations of like classic monsters, and you kind of have a vague idea of what Darkstalkers is. You have amazing characters like Morrigan, who's probably the most famous out of anything here, and Felicia, Little Red Riding Hood with an Uzi. You have my favorite character, the Bumblebee Lady, who waggles her butt at all of her enemies and I giggle every single time I see it. You get to fight vampires and other crazy monsters in amazing environments with a fantastic soundtrack. Fighting on the side of a building is an absolute treat, as is the Vampire Masquerade, no relation to the RPG. They're just amazing stages that will always stick with me. Those will be seared into my brain. They're just so instantly memorable along with the incredibly goofy, fun cast of wacky monsters, watching this game just animate is an absolute treat, and it's a fun fighting game. Again, I'm not the best at fighting games, my hands don't work all that well, but if I can endorse this fighting game because I love it that much, I'm gonna. Darkstalkers as a series is fantastic, and it's absolutely crushing this was basically their last chance to gain hype, and kind of failed, because since then we've had some cameos, and we've had Darkstalkers as like DLCs for arcade compilations, and that's it. And we could really stand to use more Darkstalkers, because it's just infinitely more interesting than Street Fighter, let's just be honest. Number 5, Res HD. Let me tell you, Res is one of, like, Sega's three most abused IPs that could just have so much more done with it and just don't. Right up there with Jet Set Radio and Skies of Arcadia. Res is actually a pretty historically important game. This is quite famously the very first game, and as far as I know the only game, to also be sold with a vibrator. That is factual information. It is genuinely a very interesting and very different style of game. It is ostensibly a rail shooter, not unlike Panzer Dragoon, but it's done all to an absolute audio-visual feast for the senses. This game is absolutely engrossing and beautiful, and it's kind of also sort of a rhythm game, but not quite. Res is a game that is just absolutely gorgeous and very very special to play, and it gets kind of weirdly philosophical by the end as well. It is a very, very unique experience, and it would be absolutely crushing if this game just disappeared forever, and you didn't get to play it. Now that said, 
there's always copies on the Dreamcast, but the Dreamcast games are exactly as expensive as Dreamcast games are. And there is an updated version on Steam and PS4, but if you are purely a member of the Xbox ecosystem, this is what you've got, and it will be gone soon. And if you don't play it now, you'll never have that experience. Saying that out loud for me, thinking about people never getting to play Res, that I just, that's devastating to me. Number four, Charlie Murder. Let me tell you a story about a little company called Ska Studios. Last I checked, the total number of employees there were two cats and an unbelievably talented dishwasher. They created this little game called Charlie Murder. It was the final game of the ill-fated final summer of arcade, or winter arcade for the folks down under. Summer of Arcade being this awesome event Xbox used to host, where over the course of a summer, every week you get an awesome new downloadable game. There was usually some freebies and stuff. It was a great time to be part of the Xbox ecosystem, if that's what you were into. I, I always looked forward to the summer, and even looking forward to the end of summer just to see all the awesome, cool games. Well, they haven't made one since then, and there's a reason. The last one freaking sucked. They had the god-awful remake to Flashback, and they had, I believe, a really bad Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that I think was made by Platinum, of all people. Just when all hope was lost, Ska Studios strode in on their majestic, probably blood-covered stallion and delivered to us Charlie Murder. Let me try and pitch this game to you as best I can. It's Castle Crashers, but far less family-friendly, and is about a punk rock band being revived from the dead, they're possibly zombies, going after the death metal band that put them in the ground. There's also a really cool backstory to this game, and some absolutely killer music, if that premise didn't tell you what this was. It is an absolutely bloody, brilliant beat-em-up with a ton of visual style. There's a lot of loot to be picked up and found, and all of it will actually appear differently on your character. The amount of effort to do that blows my mind nonstop. I love when there's little visual stuff like that in every single game I play. And to get that out of a little tiny indie game, amazing. Every character has multiple different unlockable character classes, which means that every character can feel different from other variations of themselves. You gain new powers through the use of anarchy-infused tattoos that give you magical powers, plus your awesome beat-em-up abilities. There's fun, goofy, interstitial stages that are less beat-em-up-y and more, you know, kind of a little bit shmuppy, actually. As well as this game having some really kickin' musical levels that make references to previous ska works. This game is bloody brilliant, and it's not on the Xbox One, and it absolutely hurts that that's the case, because this game is an absolute bonkers good time. I I remember the moment this game first showed its teaser trailer, and I have had the bloody theme song to this game stuck in my head ever since, and this game is just such a really cool twist on the sort of Castle Crashers goofy beat-em-up experience, with a lot more style and gore. And I mean, hell, this is a game where you can take your opponent's brain and then brain their buddy with them. This game is bloody brilliant, and you need to play it. Number three, The Dishwasher, Vampire Smile. Let me tell you about this little company called Ska Studios. Their employee roster consisted of two cats and one unbelievably talented dishwasher. Whoa, deja vu. Anyway, they started out on the Xbox Marketplace releasing indie titles that you can't get anymore because Xbox nuked the entire indie program, and I am unbelievably bitter about this because there was some really genuinely cool stuff on there. At the time, their indie endeavors were probably known best for I Made a Game with Zombies in it, a game you can download right now on Steam for free. You're welcome. However, they struck out into the mainstream arcade market with the Dishwasher Dead Samurai. This is a direct sequel to this. It is a game that, I swear, was made exactly just for me. I mean, I could say that about literally everything Ska Studios puts out. Their games are so incredibly cool and stylish and tailored just for my tastes. But think Devil May Cry, but in 2D, with a gritty comic book aesthetic, ridiculous amounts of gore, and just an incredible feeling. This game is fast kinetic combat with a bunch of really crazy weapons, and this is just an absolutely brilliant experience. I knew when I first played this way back in the day that this was a very special game, and yeah, yeah it is. I mean, I'm gonna level with you. I plan on recording like 10 minutes of footage of this for this segment, and then I was just gonna get on with my day, because I have stuff to do. Yeah, this kind of became my whole night. This game is still one of the greatest things on the Xbox 360, 
and you need to play it. And look, okay, if somehow 2D awesome, hyper-stylized, incredibly gory, Devil May Cry with a heavy metal soundtrack isn't enough to sell you on this game, let me try again. There are chainsaw duels in this game. And if you win them, you get an achievement called Bigger, Better, More badass -er. You need this game in your life. And just in general, more Ska Studios. Seriously, I swear they have just a, a direct line to my brain for what we need in gaming, because these games are bloody brilliant and I love them. Number 2. Shooting Love 200X. I'm not gonna lie, when I came up with the idea for this list, I had three games specifically in mind that I wanted to make this list for, and two of them had already been delisted. Rest in Peace, Bangayo, Missile Fury, and Exotic. I'll always have the footage. I mean, you're on my hard drive, so I can play you whenever, but I wish I had Bangayo. But Shooting Love is still there, and I suggest you grab it while you can, because it is a very unique experience for the Xbox 360. Let's put it this way. This is a sort of port of a Japanese exclusive arcade game. This game, as far as I can tell, was never properly translated, not that there was really all that much to translate in the first place. So why this is on the North American Xbox Marketplace is beyond me. Think of Shooting Love sort of like WarioWare, but for shmups. And you kind of have a general idea of what this game is about. It will throw you a whole bunch of quick-paced, instantaneous minigames to test your shooting skills. And in the world of get good culture somehow being a thing and not like the facetious thing it started out as, this game will at the end quantify and measure your gaming skill based on how well you handled all those minigames. This game will tell you exactly how good a gamer you are, and it will actively measure your improvements if you keep playing them. And every time you play them, you actually get a different pool of minigames and actually unlock more as you go. It's incredibly fun to play this game just to see all the wacky crazy events that happen and on top of that you get like three other shmups just packed in on the top of like the shmup skill test portion of the game which is really the thing i focus on those games are fun they're not bad or anything but honestly it's the weird aptitude test chunk of the game that really impresses me because i haven't really seen something like this anywhere else except on the switch where there's a version of this bundled together with the beat-em-up focused arcade love which also included Pengo for some reason. And of course, you can get all of these things individually chunked out on Steam for a lot more money, but this is just a bizarre diamond in the rough on the Xbox marketplace that defies all reason and logic. It shouldn't be here for what it is, and it's just so different and interesting and engaging, and I would be remiss not to tell people to play this game because it is such a different, special experience to get something else out of the Xbox marketplace. When I think Xbox, I think mostly Halo and Gears of War, you know, burly guys with guns, and that's fine if you like that, but I wanted something different. And this game gave me that. It gave me a completely different view of Xbox, mostly from the lens of a Japanese arcade, and it was awesome. Number one. Yeah, this one was a bit of a head-scratcher for me, honestly. Not that it doesn't belong on this list or anything, but, like, this isn't on the Xbox One? What? How is that possible? Like, this just feels like something that has to be there, and it's just not in any capacity? This is a game that absolutely baffles me it's not backwards compatible or, you know, remade or something, because it is one of the most beautiful games the Xbox 360 ever had. That game is Dust, an Elysian Tale. This game came out the very first year I started making videos, like 10 years ago now. Wow, I feel old, and my channel has not gotten the growth I desperately hoped it would have, and that's sending me into an existential crisis, so let's forget about that. But the year I started this, I did not make a Game of the Year list, so let me make something completely crystal clear right now. Dust and Elysium Tale was my Game of the Year. This is the most beautiful game I have ever seen on the Xbox 360, and is one of the most amazing indie games you can get for this console. It is an absolutely beautiful non-linear platforming hack and slash adventure. Think Metroid meets Devil May Cry, but with the art style of a vanilla wear game. Seriously, this looks like Odin's Sphere. And the most mind-blowing thing of all, this beautiful, beautiful game made by one person. This game was the result of nothing but hard work and passion, and it is unbelievably good. It has an amazing story with some really cool twists that makes me desperately wish we had a sequel, and seriously, if I have to wait another 20 years to get it, it'll still be worth it if it's the same quality this game was. Dust is an amazing platformer, 
that is some of the most beautiful visuals you could ever see, fantastic voice cast, a fun story, and some great combat. This is a world I want to explore more of, and it hit me deeply on a very personal level, speaking as someone who has developed games and has spent decades doing so, only to have my work destroyed and lead me here, such as it is, for a career. This is a game that I want to see succeed, and to be fair, it's succeeded enough to be remade a few times, it's on Steam, it's on PS4, it's been updated, but for whatever reason, it's not on the Xbox One. And if you exist solely within the Microsoft ecosystem, you will lose the opportunity to play this beautiful gem of a game. And thinking about that, honestly, I, I am literally tearing up thinking about the, just the fact that people will never be able to play this otherwise. This is an unbelievably special experience, as are every other game I've listed here, because I wanted to pick things that made me happy over the course of owning the 360, the most definitive experiences, the experiences I want to pass on to you and I want you to be able to experience. That's what this list is. It's a warning. This might be your last chance to experience some truly special games, and I am begging you to take this last opportunity to do so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this list. I worked quite hard on it, especially after noticing that half the games I wanted to talk about actually aren't available anymore, and that genuinely breaks my heart. But these games were very special to me, and I hope that you enjoyed watching them. I hope that you consider playing some of these, because they are very special games in some capacity or another. And, you know, if you've got some awesome gems on the Xbox 360 marketplace you want to let me know about, you know, let me know in the comments, because seriously, I have not played everything on here, and, I mean, evidently, the amount I'm going to be able to is dwindling quickly, which is a bit scary, but I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, subscribe to my show to see more, because, you know, helping to grow this channel, what with this sort of being everything I put all my effort into, because I love this stuff so much, consider supporting the show through the PayPal or Patreon, so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability, which in this case is talk about some games very personally important to me that would be a real shame if they were just to disappear without anyone ever knowing. And, I mean, I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, internet.